In this part of the operating systems course related to memory management, we are going to cover fixed partitioning and variable partitioning. Then the first fit, best fit and worst fit algorithms for variable partitioning will be considered. The concepts location and compaction will also be covered in this part. Fixed partitioning is a memory ma management approach used in early systems. In this method, memory is divided into partitions whose sizes are fixed. Operating system is placed into the lowest bytes of the memory as shown in the figure uh, and relocation of processes is not needed. There is an area, a partition for the small sized processes here and if a small size process arrives, it will be loaded into this area. Another partition is for the medium sized processes and also one more partition for the large processes. And uh, here the sizes of each partition is shown here. On entry to the system, processes are classified according to their memory requirements. We need one process queue for each class of processes. So there's a queue for the small area, another for the medium area, and also for the large area. If a process is selected and is allocated memory, it starts residing in memory and can compete for the processor. The number of fixed partitions gives the degree of multi programming. Since each queue has its own memory region, there is no competition between queues for the memory. So the processes to be uh, uh, to, uh, to execute are those already loaded into the partitions. The main problem with fixed partition method are how to determine the number of partitions and how to determine partition sizes. Uh, also uh, here, uh, it should be noted that if there are more than one process uh, for the small size uh, area, only one is in the memory and the others will wait until the process in the small size area terminate. Another approach is fixed partitioning with swapping. This is a version of fixed partitioning that uses round robin scheduling with some time quantum. When time quantum for a process expires, it is swept out of memory to disk and the next process in the corresponding queue is swept into the memory. We here assume that P1 is a small size process. It's already loaded into the memory. And P3 is waiting in the related queue for the medium sized process area for this partition. P2 is already in the memory and P4, P5 are waiting in the queue. And uh, here there is no process of large size because of that, that area is empty. Here only process information is stored in the queue. The process uh, itself is in the secondary storage. Only P1 is in the memory, in the main memory for the small size processes. And for this part, P2 is in the main memory. P4 and P5 information is in the queue. However, their codes are in the secondary storage. When the time expires, the quantum expires for process P1, it is swept out from the main memory to secondary storage. And it enters to the end of the queue. 
and the process in the front of the queue is selected to be loaded into the main memory. Then the process tree is swept in from the secondary storage into the main memory. Sometimes later, the time quantum for process tree expires. It enters to the end of the related queue and it is swept out from the main memory to secondary storage. And P1 is swept in from the memory into the, from secondary storage into the main memory. We have a problem which is called fragmentation. In this example, operating system is here, then comes a partition for the small size processes. The size of the partition is 2K, and also we have a process having the same size. There is no process for the medium sized a, a, a partition, it is empty, and there is another process in the large uh, pro process area, and the size for this area is 12k, there is a process of size 9k, and the rest of the partition is empty. Consider this one, if a whole partition is currently not being used, then it is called an external fragmentation. We have a partition here, but no process is loaded. This is external fragmentation. If a partition is being used by, the, by a process requiring some memory smaller than the partition size, then it is called internal fragmentation. Here, the size of the process P2 is smaller than the size of the partition. We have an empty region of 3K, so this is an internal fragmentation. We continue with variable partitioning. With fixed partitions, we have to deal with the problem of determining the number and sizes of partitions to minimize internal and external fragmentation. If we use variable partitioning instead, then partition sizes may vary dynamically. In the variable partition method, we keep a table, a linked list indicating used free areas, used and free areas in the memory. Initially, the whole memory is free and it is considered as one large Log. When a new process arrives, the operating system searches for a block of free memory large enough for that process. After process is loaded into memory, we keep the rest available free for the future processes. If a process becomes free, then the operating system tries to merge it with its neighbors if they are also free. There are memory management algorithms for variable partitioning. They are first fit, next fit, best fit, worst fit, quick fit. There are some alternatives. Here we are going to consider those underlined here. In the first fit algorithm, the first free block that is large enough for the new process is allocated. This is a fast algorithm. Consider this example. The memory map is given. We have operating system in the low address memory area. Then comes a process of 12 kilobytes. Here we have a free area of 10 kilobytes. P2 is 20 kilobytes loaded in this region of the memory. Another free area of 16 kilobytes. P3 
of six globite, and then comes another free area of four kilobyte. Now, a process of three kilobyte arrives. We are checking the free area. In fact, this is checked from the link list showing the free area. And here, the size of the free area is larger than the size of the process, so it can be loaded into this area. After P P4 is loaded, then the size of the free area becomes smaller. It was previously 10 kilobyte, now it is 7 kilobyte. Then, sometimes later, process P5 of 15 kilobyte arrives. We are checking the first region, first area. This is smaller than the process size, so process cannot be loaded into this area. And then we are checking the next one. This is 16 kilobyte, and this is larger than the process. So first fit region is this one. P5 is loaded into this region. After P5 is loaded, in the 16 kilobyte free area, it remains only one kilobyte region. Another, another approach is the best fit. In the best fit, the smallest block among those that are large enough for the process is allocated. In this method, operating system has to search the entire list or it can keep it sorted and stop when it hits an entry which has a size larger than the size of the new process. This algorithm produces the smallest leftover block. However, it requires more time for searching all the list or sorting it. If sorting is used, merging the area released when a process terminates to neighboring free blocks becomes complicated. Again, we are starting with the same with the same uh, memory map, initial memory map, the process, their sizes, and also free area the same as previously. Again, P4 of 3 kilobyte arrives. It is, it is loaded into this area. This was 4 kilobyte free area, which is the smallest among all the free area and enough for loading the process into this area. After loading process P4, in this free area, it remains as 1 one kilobyte. Another process, P5 of 15 kilobyte arrives. Then we are searching for the smallest area larger than the new process. So this is the free area. The process P5 is going to be loaded there. After it is loaded, in this region, remains a one kilobyte memory. Another one is the worst fit. Worst fit allocate the largest block among those that are large enough for the new process. Again, a search of the entire list or sorting is needed. This algorithm produces the largest over block. Again, the same initial memory mapping. P4 arrives. This was the largest, this was the largest free area. So it is going to be loaded in this area. It's loaded, then the free area becomes 13 kilobyte. 
Then comes the process P5, which is 15 kilobyte. But notice that although totally the free area is larger than the new process, but because each partition is smaller than the process, there is no place to load P5 of 15K into the main memory. So, in this case, compaction is needed. The free areas should be combined to each other. Compaction is a method to overcome the external fragmentation problem. Notice that for the variable partitioning, because there is no partitions, there is no internal fragmentation, but there is only external fragmentation. All three blocks are brought together as one large block of free space. Compaction requires dynamic relocation. Certainly, compaction has a cost and selection of an optimal compaction strategy is difficult. One method for compaction is swapping out those processes that are to be moved within the memory and swapping them into different memory locations. So this is the memory map. Before compaction, we are not able to load the process P5 into the memory. Compaction is needed. This is the memory before compaction. First, we are swapping out process P2. Then it is loaded back with a different starting address. It is loaded just after process P1. And then process four is swept out and swept in with a different starting address. And then it is repeated for process P3. So after this swap out and swap in operation, the memory, free area in the memory are combined. We have a large unfragmented memory here. The free area becomes 27 kilobyte after compaction. Now P5 of 15 kilobyte can be loaded here. After P5 is loaded, the free area becomes 12 kilobyte. It should be noted that we have two kinds of relocation. Static relocation is such that a process may be loaded into memory each time possibly having a different starting address necessary for variable partitioning. On the other hand, in the dynamic relocation we have, in addition to static relocation, the starting address of the process may change while it is already loaded in memory. So dynamic location is necessary for compaction because before the process completed, the starting address is changed by the relocation. 